Hello my dear students, welcome to your Geographies online class. Today in this class we will be discussing chapter 13 of your book that is water resources and types of irrigation. Before we discuss about the types of irrigation in India or the need of irrigation in India, let us first discuss about the water resources available in the country or in short we can say the importance of water. When we see this or when we discuss about water, at present this is one of a burning topic to be discussed that water crisis is a severe concern in the entire part of the globe. Though the earth is composed of 71% of water bodies and only 29% of land and hence we call the planet as a watery planet or a blue planet. Yet, the 71% water available on this earth is not all usable. In short, we can say that not all of this water can be used for human needs. Because these water bodies make up of the oceans, seas, lakes, rivers, underground waters, even lagoons, backwaters, surface waters, all of these make up hydrosphere with 71%. The entire part of this globe, if the water that we have would have been usable, then we today would not have been fighting with water crisis. And when we consider in India, with the world's second largest populous country, water crisis or you can say problems has always been. Either because of non-judicious utilizations of water that are available or because of sheer unavailability of water resources. A country like India with 130 crores of population requires a huge demand, has a huge demand of water. But the usable water to what is we call fresh water is very less. The reason because despite having numerous rivers that flows in India, not all the waters that flows in these rivers are very well utilized or conserved, conserved for future use. Hence, the problem always arises. So if we discuss about the water resources in India, let's see. India is a home to 16% of the world's population in mere a very small area of only 2.45% of the land. 16% of the world population. So, such a large populated country, the water available is only 4% of the world resources. In this, if we see, if we see in this, in a year, India has almost 4000 cubic kilometers of rainfall we receive. But only 60% of the total water resources available in India is usable or is utilized. So more than half of it goes as a waste, either as a surface runoff or it's drained into rivers or it just simply flows on the surface. So there it becomes a major problem because conservation process is not to its efficiency. And if we see the sources of water in India, apart from precipitation, the most important water resources that can be utilized is of surface water as a form of fresh water and then we have ground water. Surface water and ground water. The surface water in India or the surface water mostly comprises of the rivers, lakes, the tributaries of these rivers, 
ponds, they make up the surface water. And in India alone, if we see, as per Dr. K. L. Rao, we see that there are 10,360 rivers, major rivers along with its tributaries that flows in India. With a total carrying capacity of 1869 billion meter cubes of water that have been discharged, which is almost 6% of the total discharge of the world. But only 32% out of these water is utilized in India, which is only 690 billion meter cube or cubic meter. So this means the major part of water flows out unutilized. Whereas we have major rivers in India. In fact, we have rivers like Brahmaputra and Ganga, which are one of the largest rivers in the world. And alone in the northern plains, about 60% of water is carried by the three major rivers of India in this Brahmaputra and Ganga. Yet most part of it is unutilized. Though after independence, there are at certain point for conservation of water or storage of water is been taken care, but yet it's not up to the sub mark or you can say it's insufficient for whatever has been stored. Groundwater or underground water. This is the water that is formed or is found underneath the earth's crust. Its source is more likely rainfall. With this rainwater, Precolating under the earth's surface or you can say penetrating the earth's surface in the softer regions mostly. They enter the earth's crust through the permeable layer until where they are being holded by the impervious layer which does not allow the water further to flow out inward. And hence this water is stored in form of groundwater or we also call it underground water. The underground water are mostly utilized for irrigation purpose and domestic purpose. But in India, not every place has an even distribution of groundwater. If we see as this the earth crust and then the water underneath it that has been formed as underground water, the top layer of this water is known as water table or the surface of underground water is known as water table. The water table fluctuates. It is not of an even, evenly distributed throughout the country. Places having good amount of rainfall does have high water table. While places receiving less rainfall in India, the water table is very low. Or it's not just the rainfall, what is most important that determines the water level or level of underground water is the surface of the earth's crust. If it's a hard and rocky layer, earth the earth's surface is composed of hard and rocky layers to what is we call impervious layer, then the availability of water will be very less underneath it. Because this impervious layer will not allow the water to percolate inside the earth's crust. While in those layers mostly composed of softer soil or softer rocks, they allow the water to penetrate inside them and hence results in the formation of underground water. So this unevenness in the distribution and rugged topography hard surface are also the hindrance that causes the low availability of underground water. So this is all about the class today. We will further discuss in details about the demands of water and as well the forms of irrigation and its importance. Thank you class and you all have a good time.